Hi folks, and welcome back to another tutorial. In this video, I'll address the most common question I've received about my procedural nanoparticle asset, which is how do you get mold and two phases? So today I'll show you how to assign as many different phases or colors as you want, as well as how to have a little bit of control over the relative proportion of each phase. Anyhow, let's get started. So I've got here my procedural nanoparticle, if you haven't got yourself one, follow the link in the description box to my Gumroad page. So let's have a look at how it currently works and assigns this bimetallic shader with two phases. If you come into geometry nodes, you'll find there is a section where a bunch of attributes are created in order to achieve the bimetallic shading. And they work by assigning either a zero or one to every atom in the nanoparticle and then storing this in a designated attribute. Then this attribute gets called in the shader to drive this mix shader so that there is control over which of the two materials are given to which atom. This approach works well for two phases, but it can't handle more than two since you can only really define two conditions with the mix shader. So let's say we want more than two, for example, three phases, one, two, and three with proportions of 50%, 30%, and 20% of the atoms. How could we deal with something like this? So let's get started by coming back to geometry nodes. I'm going to come to the section where we store the attributes for the shading and we will create our nodes here. First, we need to store some important values for calculations later. First, let's initialize a phase ID attribute that creates an index for each of the phases. Look for a store named attribute node, set it to integer, leave it to point, and let's create a name called phase ID. And we're going to initialize this attribute with a value of zero. Essentially, we're going to use zero to indicate that the atoms start phaseless, and then we'll update this value to something that is non-zero each time the atom is given a phase. Let's also add a color attribute, duplicate the store named attribute node, and let's rename that phase color, change from integer to color. And we're also going to initialize this with a black color. So phaseless atoms are black by default. We also need to know the total number of atoms that this nanoparticle has. Again, we'll need this for calculations later. Look for a domain size node, leave the type to mesh, and this output point count will give the total number of atoms in this nanoparticle at this point in time. To assign the phases, we're going to create this node group, which lets you define the fraction and color for a given phase, indicated by some integer index, i.e. our phase index. The way it works is it takes in a bunch of atoms, selects only the atoms with a phase ID of zero, so all of those that still have no phase assigned, then within that, it selects a fraction of them to change their phase ID to something non-zero to assign a phase and then to change their color. We'll repeat this process for all of the phases by just copy and pasting this group. In order to see what we're doing, we need to create a material that is dependent on the phase of the atoms. Let's come to the shader editor. I'm going to start with the two-phase random, which we currently have, and just duplicate it and call it multi-phase. Get rid of the mix shader, one of the principal BSDFs. And in the attribute name, look for phase color, which we just initialized, take the color output, plug it into the principal BSDF. So whatever color we store in the phase color attributes will directly drive the color of this principal BSDF. Let's come to geometry node setup and look for multi-phase. And this should give us black because all of the atoms right now do not have a phase assigned to them in this multi-phase material. Come back to geometry nodes and let's continue making our assigning phase group. So let's start with the first process, which is to select all of the atoms that currently are phaseless. For that, we need a selection criteria for atoms with phase ID equals zero. Look for a named attribute, set it to integer and type phase ID. Look for a compare node, set it to integer equals, I want to set this to integer as well, and have it set equal to zero. So this gives a Boolean yes whenever the phase ID equals zero. Now we want to start manipulating the phase ID of these atoms we've just selected. Look for another store named attribute node and plug that in. Set the type to integer point. And again, we want phase ID. Plug the selection we've just created into the selection. And so now it's going to change all of the atoms with a phase ID of zero to some designated target value. I actually don't want that. I want some of them to remain zero and a, another bunch to become a new phase ID. So for that, I want to add a random value node, set it to boolean, and plug that into the value node. We need to change two things here though. First, we want the boolean to give zero or our chosen phase ID, not zero and one, which are currently outputs. So next, add a map range node, plug that in, 
deselect clamp and we leave zero to one from the from min and from max as that's what the random value outputs but the two min and two max i wanted to go from zero and then to some max which will be our designated phase id so first i'm going to select all of these nodes Control g to make it into a group i'm going to take the two max input and connect it to the group input and i'm going to call this input phase id set the type to integer going from zero to whatever integer we want. And so this input from outside the group allows us to define a number for whatever phase we're creating with this node group. Second, we want to change how this probability works. We want it to depend on the phase fraction. So let's first connect this to the group input as well and call this phase fraction. So we want to be able to define the 50%, 30%, 20% of each phase, like we mentioned before, and have that drive the ratio of atoms that are converted to the new phase ID. However, there's an issue here though. Since we're only working with a subset of total atoms, i.e. the ones that only have phase equals zero, which is not always all the atoms, this phase fraction needs to be rescaled since it's working off the total number of atoms. We first need to calculate how many atoms there are in this subset of atoms with no phase right now. We're going to create a connection, look for a delete geometry node, a compare node, set it to integer, not equal, and also look for a named attribute. Again, we want the named attribute to be working with integer, taking on the phase ID. So take the attribute, plug it into the not equal, and put it in the selection for the delete geometry. So this should delete all of the atoms that already have a phase assigned. From the geometry output, look for a domain size node. And again, the point count output here gives us the total number of points with no phase assigned still going to join all of these nodes together in a frame and call this the number of phaseless atoms. Next, to rescale this phase fraction correctly, we need two math nodes. Change the first one to multiply, bring this closer to the group input. So in the first input, I want this to connect to the group input and change that to parameter called the total number of atoms. Then I'm going to take the phase fraction and multiply that with the total number of atoms. So this multiply gives the absolute number of atoms that need to become the phase we're about to designate. Then I want to divide that by the actual number of phaseless atoms. So set this to divide, take the point count into the lower socket of the divide and the multiply output to the upper socket. And now this gives us our rescaled probability to drive this random value boolean node. So take that, plug that into the probability input to be able to achieve different configurations of phase distribution, you might also want to connect out the seed value of the random value node, and we'll be able to toggle different distributions. So this process here now completes the step of reassigning phase IDs. We now need to assign a color based on these updated phases. So to do that, go ahead and duplicate the store named attribute node, set the type to color, and change this to phase color which we set up already outside of this node group. And now we want to update the color for all of the atoms for which we just updated the phase ID here. So to do that, select the named attribute and compare node from earlier and duplicate them. Plug in the result into here. Look for a group input node. And I basically want to say where the phase ID equals the phase ID we choose. Change the color and now take the value of color and plug it into the group input. And so this gives us the ability to change the color we assign to this new phase from outside. And so with that, the node setup for assigning new phases is finished. So let's tab out and I'm going to call this node group phase assign. Let's take the point count output of the domain size we already set up into the total number of atoms. And now it's all just a matter of assigning a phase ID and a phase color. And so 50% of the atoms right now have a phase of one and 50% still have zero or phaseless, hence they're coming out black. To get another phase going, I'm going to duplicate the phase assigned node, also connect the point count output from the domain size again into the total number of atoms. And let's set this to 30%, so 0.3. And I want those atoms to have a color red. Make sure to change the phase ID. And then finally, we need 20% to go to the third phase. And I'm going to change that, say, to a blue color. And you can now just play around with the colors that you want. So I get this, and you can explore different phase distributions across the nanoparticle. Just a small caveat, you might find that even after all this, even when the phase fractions of all of the phases you assign add up to one, you're still left with some atoms that remain black, i.e. the phase assignment hasn't reached all of the atoms. And the reason why this happens is actually a quirk of this random value node, where if you define a probability for the Boolean random value, it doesn't quite catch the actual number of atoms it needs. 
And so the way you can get around this issue of unassigned phase atoms, you can add a leak geometry node after you've assigned the final phase. You can look for a named attribute node, set it to integer, and look for phase ID. And basically we want to say delete all the points where the phase ID is still equal zero, like so. And so now you will end up with a couple of holes here and there, but for the most part, it just cleans up all of the atoms and makes sure that at least the ones that are left do have the phases that you want. Anyhow, that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you learned something new along the way. As always, I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like and a comment if you found it useful or even if you found something confusing. Subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye for now.